Hello everyone, welcome to another Router Gods video. My name is Humphrey Chung and in this video we're going to take a look at a practice CCIE topology and what we're doing is we're using INEs, which is Internet Work Experts practice topology in their volume 1, volume 2, and volume 3 study guides. And what I've done is I've taken out all the switches from it and we're using GNS3 so we're actually we can't really practice with switches because GNS3 does not support that and probably never will because it's a different processor. There are no image files for those switches. But what we've done is we've taken the topology, I've taken out the switches so all we have are the routers and the backbone routers and we'll go into uh, those things later. So what we're going to cover in this video, we're going to cover the settings for GNS3 that you will need to run this image or run this topology. We're going to cover things like uh, having the correct version, set up your preferences, set up your iOS image, and then we'll take a look at the layout. We'll fire it up. Then we'll look at the CPU and the hardware and the operating system that I, I'm using that you will need to run this effectively. So the reason behind having this type of topology is if you have a powerful enough laptop, you can practice on the go. So you don't need to always go home and fire up the desktop and waste time that way. So if you have some extra time at Starbucks or McDonald's fired up, you can practice some, some labs and it's pretty easy, pretty effective for, for your stuff. So first thing we're going to do is make sure you're going to have the newest version of GNS3. As of today, it is 072, so make sure you have that. Then we'll go into Edit and Preferences. And there's a couple things you'll need to have set. Depending on your computer and what you're doing. You may want to change this waiting time from zero seconds to one or two seconds. I have this at zero seconds because I have my images uncompressed and I'm using a RAM drive to uh, throw everything in there. So it's kind of up to you. Now I am on a Core i7 so I definitely have the horsepower to run that. If you're not on i7, if you're on a dual core, you may want to set this up at let's say two or three seconds. Terminal settings, make sure things on PuTTY and all that good stuff. GUI setting, pretty much uh, you don't have to worry about this because the topology is already set up. Dynamips, this is the important one. Obviously your Dynamips should be working and you should have enable Ghost iOS support. Very important because in some of the older versions, well, you should upgrade to the new version, but if you're running an old version, this might not be checked. You definitely need this checked and pretty much have everything else checked and you don't need to worry about the hypervisor manager usually and that's pretty much it. So most important thing is probably to have the enable ghost iOS support checked right there. Then we're going to go into the iOS images. Okay so you can see I have a lot here but on this particular particular topology I'm only using one. So it's the 3725, 3725 Advanced Enterprise 12415T so, the late, well, not really the latest and greatest, but it works for the lab. And you can see here I've already set my idle PC and pretty much set everything at default. Now, the reason I have every router as a 3725 is that, remember that Ghost iOS support, what's happening here is when the router starts up, it's going to allocate 128 megs to a router. And for the iOS, it's going to take up most of that memory chunk. Now since all the routers are the same, it's just going to ghost that or basically feed off the same copy. So it doesn't need to use 128 and 128 and another 128 megs. You can see here I've got a lot of routers. It would be multi multiplied and you'd run out of memory pretty quick. So if you have that ghost iOS support box checked, you're going to save yourself a lot of RAM. Uh, not going to really save yourself CPU processing power, but you're going to save yourself a lot of RAM. And that's why we use the same image, so it can ghost off of that. Now, if you decide to use different images, like for these backbone routers, you decide to use, let's say, a 2691 or something, something less powerful, then you're going to see your memory usage go way up because now you've added another router to the mix. And you probably don't want to do that. Okay, so looking at our layout, let's actually look at a JPEG that I've got here. Actually, it's a PNG file. A little bit easier to, to look at. So you can see here we've got backbone routers, backbone 1, backbone 2, backbone 3. And what these are, 
these are routers that are not under your control. So these are your service providers that are providing you BGP routes, external routes, that type of stuff. And so the Backbone router in the actual INA topology is a less powerful router because all it's doing is phishing you routes. It doesn't need to do too much. And technically you cannot configure those. But in our case, since we're using GNS3, we have to do a little bit of configuration to start with. You can see looking at the main topology, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, or actually one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight routers right there. And the frame relay switches are also routers that have a frame relay switch routing or frame relay switching command on them. So what we have is these are actual real routers. You're not going to be able to, well, you can configure them if you want, but I have the configuration file already for you. We have a switch here that just connects router 1, 6, and 4. We've got our frame relay cloud right here. We have another frame relay cloud in the upper left corner. And the way behind the scenes is this frame relay cloud in the upper left is 101, 101, 202, 202, or actually it might be 201, 201. 301, 301, and it goes all the way up to 501, 501. So both sides are the same number. Here, behind the scenes, it is a full mesh frame relay. So we're starting at router 1, it will go 105, and on router 5, it'll be 501. And everything's connected to everything else. So if you want, you can go into the saved configs for the frame relay router 2, FR2, and just take a look at how that works out. So it's it's actually, it was a lot of typing to do that. If you're curious about how to set up a router as a frame relay router, just Google how to set up a Cisco router as a frame relay, and you could find out all the ugly details about that. You can see here, we've got a serial connection between router 4 and router 5 out of the frame relay cloud. So this allows you to test out just a back-to-back -back serial link, uh, frame relay, back-to-back -back frame relay, and also PPV stuff. Also, the frame relay right here, you could test out uh, quite a quite a bunch of stuff if you wanted to. The reason we've got the switch right here connecting these three routers is you could test out broadcast media type stuff. So maybe if you want to play around with secondary interfaces, seeing how routing protocols mess up there, that's all well and good. That's pretty much it for this topology. Now notice that you don't have to start up all these routers at the same time and kill your computer. Let's say you're running you're not running a Core i7 like I am, but you're running a dual core. Well, if you wanted to practice basic frame relay, you could just start these up separately, back, Backbone 1 and Router 6 by themselves. And the way you do that is, I'll move my picture off there. We can right click on BB1 and you could start this separately, start there and start there. You also have to start the frame relay router in between. Now notice I don't have, I need to actually set this up. Actually, that's working fine. This is a frame relay router that's not under your control, but this one is. You'd have to start this up right there. Okay, so that takes care of the layout. Let's start it up, see what happens. Now this, I'm going to start everything up, might as well. You can see here everything started. Hit my console window right there. And everything fires up. Give it a couple seconds. And there we go. The routers are coming up. As I go down to my taskbar right there, you can see everything running. Just waiting on that last router there. There we go, router two. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So ten routers, that's not too bad all 3725s. So everything's up. I'm just going to hit enter a couple times. 